see what it is that you have for us this evening. Give us your eyes to see, your ears to hear, your heart to feel. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, without any further ado, this is a man who I look up to very much. This is uh, Coach Joe Malone. Everybody give him a hand. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. Thank you. Uh, I want to tell you a story. It's a story with Pastor Adam and I. He actually was one of my students about, what, four or five maybe years ago at MTSU. I teach at MTSU have for a long time, and before that I taught at the high school level. So I'm very uh, familiar with probably what you're going through. And I, I know we have middle schoolers here too tonight, but um, I just want to take a moment here, and I know that you guys want to do this anyway. I want you to give, I want you to stand up, please. Stand up. Except for you guys. You guys keep sitting, you too. Stand up. But let's give Pastor Adam and Brianna a big round of applause. Chris and people with a sound crew up there. Up there I know. And one more big round of applause for the monks. Woo! Okay, now you can have a seat, please. So, again, they call me coach, and they do that because that's what I try to do in all the classrooms that I have. I, I coached athletics for a long time, the first 15 years that I taught in high school teacher and a coach. And one night, I was, I was not very good in the classroom to begin with, and one night at one of the football games, one of the other teachers that was in the stands came down and he said, why don't you try some of those same techniques that you're using you know, with, your, with your players in the classroom? And I never had really thought about that, you know, the motivational things, the things that get people fired up. And so I started trying that, and actually it ended up working out very, very well. So tonight, we're going to try to build a Jesus team here in Columbia. And I'll explain more about that in just a minute, but it takes some enthusiasm to do that. It takes um, getting to know each other. It takes kind of coming out of your shell. So I'm going to be asking you to do that a little bit tonight. Okay? This is kind of, we're going to have some kind of Bible study, a team building Bible study, if you don't mind, all right? Um, but again, uh, going back to when I was in high school, uh, I come from the West Coast originally, and the town that I went to, uh, where I went to school, high school at, was a pretty big town. And so in my youth group, in my church, there were kids from, you know, this, this high school, this high school, this middle school, this middle school. And I always knew that, you know, even though we played those teams, you know, every year, and at some point, in the different sports that I played, that I had that relationship with those guys, and, you know, and, well, I guess we didn't have women's sports back then, the way we have it now, but anyway, it was a deeper relationship that I had even with some of my own teammates. So... That's the vision I think God's put in my mind for tonight is we have this youth group here in Columbia and again, we probably have lots of different high schools and, and middle schools represented. Um, can somebody just tell me some of the middle schools and high schools you're from? Windsor. What was it? Windsor. Windsor? Central High School. Central High School? Okay. Is there another one in town too? E.A. Cox. E. Cox. Agathos. What was it? Agathos. Agathos. What was it? C.A. Okay. What I want us to do, anything else? Any others? We got, I think, Spring Hill Middle up, up here to represent it. Spring Station, right? Those are my grandsons back there, so I'm glad they can be here tonight. What I want you to do is stand up and come on down here with me. Stand up. Come on up. Come on down. Come on down. All of you. Yeah, all of you. All of you. Come on down. Remember I said it's going to be different. Come on down. I want, to, I want to do something where you get to know each other more, okay? Again, with a team... With a team, you need to make sure that uh, the first objective is to know everybody on the team, right? All right, so I want you to think about. Yeah, come on down, come on down. I want you to find somebody that isn't from your school right now. Okay, well, that's good. Okay. Now, the other thing I want you to find is. I want you to find somebody that is not very much like you physically. For instance, if you're tall, I want you to find somebody not so tall. If you're dark, I want you to find somebody not so dark. Yeah, if you're female, I want you to try to find somebody male if possible. Okay? All right. Now here's what we're going to do, if you possibly can. 
So try to make it as opposite as you can from yourself. This warm up is called. This warm up is called commonality. I've never done this as a Christian uh, commonality warm up, but tonight will be the first time. So what I want you to do is this. Now I'm going to put the mic down, so you have to listen carefully. Pastor Adam, would you come in? Okay. So here's what happens. Pastor Adam, I got to do this warm up together. Now, hopefully you're going to end up with about five or six, seven or eight people before you're done with this. Okay, so it starts out like this. I need everybody to come up with a noise. Now, this noise is always just going to whatever noise that you want to make. Whatever noise you want to make. That's it. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> so my one's poo back in the day. When I do this in, in, in college class, in secular environments. Tonight I want to do it as a Christian commonality, team builder form. Okay? So I want something from you really loud that has something to do with Christianity or the Bible. Okay? Now the word that came to me was praise. So I'm going to say praise really loud. And I want Adam, I'm just going to get the next word, Jesus. I want that really loud. Okay? It can be anything. It can be a book of the Bible. It can be you know, hallelujah. It can be whatever you come up with that has to do with Christianity. Right? Do that now. Yeah. Can you say it really loud? Uh, God bless you. Thank you. Give a round of applause. And the other thing, and the other thing we do is whatever we do with this thing tonight, we do it with enthusiasm. And that was really enthusiastic. Let's give him a little bit more enthusiasm. Okay, so we're going to do it down to one knee. If you have a bad knee, you can do this from the seats. Okay, so you can do it from the seats if you need to. But if you don't have a bad knee, just you know, we want to get you your mind, you know, you can stand it, and it's a great worship, by the way. But I kind of want to get a little blood flow here. So I'm going to ask him something that I think I might have a problem with. It. I'm going to make it easy. Do you have any brothers and sisters? I have brothers and sisters. We're going to stand up and give our, make our noise at the same time and give each other a double high five, okay? So yours is Jesus and mine is praise, right? And you have to, first of all, make sure you know their names when you reach out to Okay, stand up. Praise Jesus! Yeah. You know, one more time, we'll try to the same time, right? Praise Jesus! There we go. Go back down. Okay. Now, let me ask you something. I think this might have a I have uh, some dog and die. That's what I posted now. I have one. Exactly the same. So we're going to do it twice this time, all right? All right. Praise Jesus! Praise Jesus! And then we're going to find somebody else. Find somebody else. Okay. All right, you ready? Wait, how many times have you got it? We do it. We, we do it. One, you, the person asks them the question, then you do double high five once. And then the other person asks a question, double high five twice. And then you go find a new partner. Does that make sense? So, it should be really loud in here. Really loud. And it's okay, you know, in Christian circles to have a good time. So go ahead and have a good time. Alright, ready? Go!
All right, thanks everybody. Give yourself a big round of applause. Okay, so. I'm glad you like it. All right, everybody, so again, thanks for, for coming out of your shell. I'm gonna ask you to do a few more things like that as we go through the night. But first, let's go ahead. Uh, Chris, are you back up there yet? Yeah. Can you go ahead and hit the first slide, first verse? Uh, I've become somewhat of a relationship specialist. I'm writing a book right now, co-authoring a book actually on relationships, and it's pretty, it's kind of a specialized type of relationships. Something you'll come to eventually, I'm sure. But uh, again, think of the night as being a Christian relationship seminar, so to speak. And again, those of you, the, you from the different schools, I hope you get to know each other better, and I hope as you go into this next school year, and if you're in sports and you have, you know, you're get, playing against each other or just, you know, rubbing shoulders with each other, I hope you realize that, hey, those people, you know, they're close to me. They're closer than some of the people that I actually go to school with. And a good reason for that is because we have this very, very strong bond from believing the same way. Okay? Well, there's probably no closer bond than that. So, taking a look at, at uh, Matthew 7, 12 to 13. This is, I'll read it for us. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. For this is the law of the prophets. Now, I want to take that first part as it is. Does anybody know what that's called just out in society in general? The golden rule. Tell me your name. That's right. We just met. Give Tia a big round of applause. Okay, the golden rule. That's one of the first things we want to try to practice with each other. And again, if you're playing against those other teams, that's a great time to use that golden rule. Because people won't expect that. You know, when you're against the other team, they expect you to be the, the enemy of that other team. That is very impressive when, uh, you know, a one, one side will come up and actually help the other person up off the ground as football or something like that. That's what we did with our athletes when I was coaching them. We told them, play as hard as you can between the whistles. But after the, whistle, after the whistle is blown, you go and be a gentleman with those guys that you're playing against. And again, we had this Christian uh, uh, ethos, I guess you'd call it, on the team that I, that I coached, like I said, in high school. Um, but we never could really come out, you know, and, and, and be what you wanted to be. Kind of the same way that with Adam's class, you know, in MTSU when I taught his class, I could never really say all the things I wanted to say, but he didn't know it, and the rest of them didn't know it, but I would literally kneel and pray before they got there um, each morning before the class started that God would have his way in what we did that day. And the class has a pretty good reputation. There's people that come up to me afterwards and said, hey, my, my life was changed by the class. It wasn't by me. It was by taking that action of praying and asking God to use, use me and work through me. So that's another thing I would encourage you to do. Whatever you do, going forward, you know, this next coming school year and hopefully the rest of your life, just ask God to bless it before you go to do it, and I think uh, great things will happen for you. Okay, the second part of this. For the gate is wide, and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many. Again, I don't want to get too preachy up here, because I'm really not a preacher by, by trade, so to speak, um, but I've learned from a lot of great preachers, and one of the first things I remember when I was you know, really young, like my, my grandson's age, is being taught this that, you know, it's really easy to do all the wrong things. It's not so easy to do the right things. And again, we have to kind of lean on change. the strength that Jesus gives us because yeah. uh, this book that I'm writing really brings out a lot of things that make it difficult for us because of our human nature to do the right thing a lot of times. And so, again, by leaning on Jesus and leaning on each other, if you have this team we're talking about here in Columbia, it becomes a lot easier. Maybe, maybe it becomes possible, or it wasn't so possible before. Okay. Chris, go ahead. Okay, so, <clears throat> speaking of that, a man of many companions may come to ruin, but there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. So again, what is that first part of that verse say to you? A man of many companions may come to ruin. What do you think about that? I want to ask for audience participation. Anybody have an idea or a thought? And I'll repeat what you said. Go ahead. Um, there's a lot of different things, but mainly it 
there's too many people that you confide in or too many people that you look to and you have about a thousand different opposing views and you don't know which one to listen to or if you choose to listen to those thousand point of views you might end up listening to the wrong one and it can lead to your own suicidal path or depression or um, if you have own a business it could ruin your business because you took bad advice it could ruin your marriage it could ruin um, your mm -hmm. life relationships with your family people that really do care about you that have the right biblical wisdom and you're not listening to them because you choose to listen to the people of the world that you surround yourself with that's very good <laughs> yeah give a round of applause Soleil, yeah. There's a lot of wisdom there, and I, get, I think what Soleil especially was getting to was, she said a key, a key phrase there, the people in your life that really, you know really care about you. Your parents, for one, in most cases. Your, you know, your brothers and sisters, your siblings. I want to listen to them more than you want to listen to maybe some of your friends. But that's easy to say up here for me, not so easy to do, because the research shows that at your age, most of your, your age is in here, those friends that are sitting next to you are very, very important. Okay? And I don't want to try, try to dismiss that, but there's wisdom in the, those phrases up there. There's wisdom in all the Bibles. But if you just kind of look at it carefully, you can see maybe what it's saying, like Soleil was saying. Maybe don't give so much uh, weight sometimes to what everybody else is saying. Go with those people that you know really love you. And also, Pray about it. Pray about what you should do all the time. Pray without ceasing, the, the word says. Okay, and also, there are friends that stick closer than a brother. And that is something that is invaluable as well. Yes. Um, another thing on that is the 10,000 voices of opinion and stuff. Stay off of Facebook. <laughs> Don't listen to 90% of the advice given unless they are true Christian biblical friends because sometimes Facebook is just a breeding ground for drama. So always practice spiritual truth. And this thing about companionship and friends, you'll know who your true friends are and you'll also be an example of what a true friend is. Another round of applause, please. Again, another great point, social media has made it much more difficult since my wife, she's back there too, by the way, um, you're going to hear from her at the end. Uh, social media has uh, really raised the ante as far as being difficult as far as all these issues that we're talking about. But again, you can be, I think, wise in how you use that as well. Everything that we've had that's been invented, God has an answer for, Christ has an answer for, so just, just know that. Okay, Chris, next slide, please. A friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. Again, look for those kinds of people that can fit that role. You know, and again, I think oftentimes you're going to find them in your Christian group of friends. Not always. I mean, there are people that say they're Christians and, you know, it's apparent that they aren't by the way they treat, they treat you or treat other people. But I think there's a better chance of finding them in your Christian group of friends than finding them probably any, anywhere else. Um, do you know the story of Jonathan and David? Does anybody know that and would be willing to? I, I know I can tell it to you, but if there's anybody that knows it, I'd like to hear from you. And by the way, I like, I like having you use the mic, so just raise your hand if you want to say something. Anybody? Okay, we're a small group. Again, we want to build a team here, so let's not be bashful tonight. Um, Jonathan and David, King David, everybody knows who that was, right? Went out and killed Goliath with his sling. Nobody thought that was ever going to happen. That, that's the greatest underdog story in the history of sports. <laughs> or any other, or, or combat, so to speak. Jonathan is a less, Jonathan and David, their relationship is, is a lesser known story. But let me just share with you. If, you have, if you're taking notes, you might want to jot this down. Because Jonathan was the son of King Saul. And King Saul was the, the king that, you know, uh, had been king for a long time had a lot of success, but he fell away from God and fell out of favor with God. And God anointed you know, uh, David as the next king. So, but there are these years between that happening, him being anointed, and him actually becoming king. So 
uh, Jonathan, Saul's, King Saul's son, befriended David. And all these years that King Saul was essentially trying to kill David. I mean, at one point, he had to bend him to the wall with, <laughs> with a spear. And uh, another time, uh, David was out and being sought by Saul to, to actually have to be killed by, his, by Saul's soldiers. And uh, Jonathan signaled him by, he sent a message with one of, one of the servants to tell David that if he overshot the target, it meant that meant certain things. He was, he was using a bow, you know, he was, he was like on, on a range. And whatever his shot did meant a, was a message for David because David couldn't come close because he was going to be captured if he did. So all those years that uh, were between David being anointed and actually becoming the king, and where Saul hated him and was jealous of him and wanted to get rid of him, Jonathan was on his side. And so when David finally did take over the kingdom and Jonathan, unfortunately, was killed. Jonathan had a son that was crippled. And this, this uh, kind of brings tears to my eyes almost a bit. Uh, David didn't forget the kindness of Jonathan. And instead of, you know, normally when a king has, is taken over by another king, they have all of their relatives killed because there could be somebody taking over that spot you know, David's spot would be taken over by one of the relatives of Saul. Well, this crippled young man that uh, was a son of Jonathan, when David found him, uh, he pulled him into his, he had him come in and eat his, at his table. So uh, he didn't forget the friendship. And the friendship uh, really is, a, I think, an example of what friendship should be over many years. And those, those two guys definitely had each other's backs. So I hope amongst the Columbia student population out here, you can develop those kinds of friendships. That's what we're looking for. And again, it came from a godly place, a godly place. Okay, Chris. Whoever walks with the wise <laughs> becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. And again, this is kind of going back to what I think was said before. Um, and again, it's something that, wisdom is something that can be obtained from God. Does anybody know this, the story of Solomon? How he became so wise? Who wrote Proverbs, all those wise sayings? Solomon, right? Why did he become so wise? He, from ex his experience to some degree, yeah. But also he asked. He asked God for wisdom. He asked for like a double portion of wisdom. And God granted it. He said, we're going to make you the wisest man ever. And so he became, he became the wisest man, you know, probably in history. And uh, that's a lesson for us as well. Ask for the things you want. You know, knock, and the door shall be open to you. Um, as young people, I think you have more of a tendency to believe that. As we get older, we have a tendency sometimes to get more jaded and more... You know, the world knocks us around and we forget that the impossible sometimes becomes possible to God. And, uh, oh, I've got a question here. So don't forget to ask, because he can grant it. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. And so it was a specific thing, but it, it came across, came about that it became, I mean, manifold. In, in, on, I guess to be a great leader, you have to be wise in all kinds of different areas. So, so yeah, that's a good point. Tell me your name. I'm Philip. Give Philip a round of applause. <laughs> oh, with enthusiasm, no? I know that guy! Uh, so again, um, for a young person, these verses, I mean, the wisdom of the world is in these verses. As you go into a new school year, make sure you make, make use of them. That's my advice to you. All right. Um, Chris, go ahead. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. Now, again, this Columbia Christian team we have down here, Jesus team. Woo! That's a, yeah, let's, let's hear it from that. Who was that? Give yeah, Chris another round of applause. You can see why you do. He said he loves him if you didn't hear him. <clears throat> All right, so let's consider how to stir up one another, and that's again, kind of what we've been doing tonight. We're about ready to do it again here. 
to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Encouragement is a, an art that is not practiced enough, in my, my view, in my years of being on this earth. Um, and some people, you know, there's a, a gift of encouragement. So there are some people that God gives, gives the gift, especially they're able to do it maybe better than others. But that's one thing I think we never get enough of. We never get enough of encouragement uh, and hearing it over and over again. There's a saying, you can never be too thin or too rich, I think. Well, I've seen examples of both of those not being true. Trust me. I live in Franklin. Did I mention that? And Brentwood. And so I know a lot of the... I have a lot of examples of that. But you can never really be encouraged enough, I don't think. More importantly, you can never encourage others enough, it, it, the way I see it, and again, my experience, okay? So, and again, more as the day drawing near. Again, I'm not sure which day we're talking about there, but uh, probably could be anything. But of course, we're some, expecting at some point the resurrection of Christ. But, there are a lot of other things that have happened, have been happening, you know, before that. That's going to occur. But um, and again, when they wrote this, they didn't know when the resurrection was going to happen. Could have happened sooner. Could have happened later. But uh, all that said, taking the uh, it, uh, chance, or not the chance, but the opportunity mm -hmm. to encourage somebody, I think, is very, very important. And you need to keep that consciously in the front of your head as you go into this movie. For the people around you, again, if you're on sports teams, for those people, again, when you're playing the other team, encourage them as well. Now, I know you got to compete to try to win, but it shows so much when you show, show great sportsmanship. It shows, you know, what's really important to you. And what should be really important to you is more than the game. It's, it's more than the game. It's doing what's right by your fellow person that's on, on the other team. And uh, again, there's no better place to show it than that. But for right now, I want everybody to stand up again. Stand up. Come on, stand up. I want you to pick out a couple people again that maybe you didn't know very well uh, up till tonight. So go ahead and cross the room in a minute here. Find somebody that you don't know very well, maybe two or three people, and just share with them what you're gonna do this school year that's gonna help encourage people more than maybe you have in the past. Just go over, go to somebody and make sure you know their name and just share with them what you're going to do off of this verse to make a difference in somebody else's life. All right? Ready? Go. Holy word. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, things that you're going to do that, that are more encouraging than maybe you have been in the past to somebody else. Maybe somebody from your school, maybe somebody from not your school, but things that you, something you've thought of, maybe what we've been talking about, is that you can do that would be more encouraging. Let me get out a little yeah. bit. So. Come here, young man. Is the guy in this talk with you? Yeah. Somebody over here is going to stand the light up just for your team. I'm going to catch it. Really? Come on, man. Leave it us? Oh, it's more like a square from oh. here. Yeah. I'm sorry, but you don't leave it. No, no, no. no. Yeah, I want to go just to, for the experience and the uh, experience to train me on how to become a worshiper. Yeah. The second is fun. Hey, let's do a back to school video. Yeah. And be like, I'd be like the old guy that's still in 10th grade, like we're getting fed. <laughs> right? That would be awesome. Right? It'd be ironic, but just because you're so uh, wise. Maybe like I was the guy that lives in the closet. You know what I mean? We should do something like that, man. I don't know how you do it. I think there's something cool to think about the school for me. I see you. Do a video where like they wake up and it's the first of summer, and then it's like 
and you show them waking up and it's like summer's already over. Share with them what you're, what you're going to do, do different. Go ahead. 
Find some different people. one there. The things we're talking about tonight, though, the things we're talking about tonight, um, let's put them into action with, with the people that can do the most good, in this case, the, the, the parents. So, uh, Chris, if you wouldn't mind. Okay. Again, like I said, I started teaching high school in 1980. Can you imagine that? Woo! 1980. It was like, it was like, you know, uh, the the dark ages. The you know the, the wheel hadn't been invented yet. Not really. Kids are still a lot the same as they were uh, at, the, at that time. But I've been doing it for a long time, I guess is what I'm saying to you, okay? And in 1980, this verse would apply just as much then as it does now, okay? So let's take a look. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. And again, I've seen a lot of Spirit-filled uh, people here tonight. And, and it's been, it was great when the monks were singing to watch, watch everybody and again get in that Spirit as we went along. Went along. And that's again what we're encouraged to do. But, as we were saying on, you know, the situation with loving your father and honoring your father and mother and all the other things we've talked about in the verses tonight, saying it and doing it are, are uh, sometimes two different things. Because in 1980, 19, 1970s when I was in school, um, getting drunk was a, a big part of all of it to show that you were somebody, um, you know, be part of the gang, be part of the group, be the one part of the cool crowd. Well, well, I had a, I did a little bit of it, but um, I just said to myself, this, this is all there is to this. I mean, where's the big thrill? That type of thing. But I guess I was lucky because some people do a little bit of it, they get addicted to it. But what I'm saying to you is that, like everything else we talked about tonight, you have to lean on Jesus, you have to lean on God to help you with it. Um, but we want to avoid those kinds of things. Now, alcohol is just one of the many choices of, of drugs. And other like behavioral addictions you can get get, in, get into, and this time in your life, you know, let's say from 15 to 25, is the big danger zone. 
again, uh, the research I've been doing for this book. Did you know that, let's have all the guys stand up, all the males stand up. Woo! All the males. Yeah, give them a round of applause, ladies. Okay. All right, stay standing up, guys. From 15 to 25, males have a three times greater chance of being killed by all causes than females that same age, okay? So, and the reason for it is a lot of what I just been talking about. Uh, needing to try to impress, needing to try to, especially for who? Who do, who do they gotta try to impress? Huh. The huh. girls, that's right. Give a round of applause. Woo! So, go ahead, let's kind of see you guys. Good job. So what I'm saying to you is that me making these statements and me making these requests up here, it's, I'm making them, and I hope you're hearing them, and I hope you'll act on them, but I know it's not the easiest thing because there's a lot of pressure in the, all of your schools to act in these directions. But again, if you form this team that we're talking about here, you have your, these relationships, you know, you have Pastor Adam and, and Pastor Brianna so up here, you know, his partner. Um, yeah, I mean, they, you can guarantee that these two do most of their work together, just like my wife and I. I have a PhD. Except, except the, actually the truth is, we have a PhD because she helped, she probably did as much work on it as I did. Stand up back there, Jody, stand up. Stand up. So again, take a little one more time, look at the verse here. Uh, do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the spirit. High school, college, what I teach mostly these days is a lot, a lot of times defined by that. And you don't have to be that way because it has so many downsides. For women, particularly, alcohol has a bunch of downsides, okay? And I won't go into it tonight, but just trust me, girls, stay away from, from it. Guys, again, it's the, the three times greater chance of being killed. The statistics for guys, for homicide, Suicide, drug overdoses, and car wrecks are three to one during this time period over the over the girls. So this is something that also is good for you to be here in, in this Christ filled atmosphere because it goes against what we're talking about. It goes against that spirit, the spirit of the world. So lean into that. And it may just save your life here in this earth. Because I believe God has a purpose for each one of us. And if you're, you know, a car wreck. Victim. You can't serve that purpose or any of those other other situations. All right. Okay, uh, Chris, please. Okay. Uh, this is a biggie too. This is the specific relationships. But before we get to that, I want to do one more thing up here so you get to know each other a little bit better. All right. This one is called a sharing warm up, and I'm gonna need you all to come down to the front again in a big group. So come on down. 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 Gotta gather around me. Gather around me tight. Okay, now I want everybody to start doing this, kind of walking in place. Walking in place. We want to get that blood moving again. Come on. No, just kind of, you don't have to do it too hard. All right. I'm going to ask you to make a choice. You, I'm going to ask you to make a choice, okay? Now, after you've made this choice, after you've made this choice, you either have to go down there or over here. After you made this choice, I want you to find somebody that you don't know again, find out their name, and then tell them why you made that choice, okay? All right, this is going to be Christian. This is going to be Christian-oriented. Now, I'm presuming that you have read the Bible before. Everybody read the Bible? Oh, come on, let's get those feet moving now. I'm the coach, you gotta go at least as fast as the coach is going. Okay. Would you prefer, okay, here's your choices. Here's your choices. When it comes to the Bible, would you prefer reading the Old Testament down there or the New Testament down there? Make a choice. Old, new. Old, new. Okay, so yeah, go down there with Brianna if you, if you like the, the new. Old and new. Tell somebody why you made that choice. Go ahead. Tell them why you made that choice. Keep those feet moving, man. Come on. This is health and wellness class. Go ahead. Tell them why. Tell them why. Tell 
this is for the rest of your life. Do you see yourself more as a single person down there or a married person down here? And tell somebody why. Single man.
been blessed to be married to that woman that I'm going to introduce you to the singer for 40 years. Woo! She's a saint for putting up with me all these years, let me tell you. And Woo! So, and again, I, I'm far from, you know, anywhere even close to being perfect. And I've caused a lot of problems in our marriage because of stupid things that I've done. Along the lines of what I'm warning you against. Okay? So, the wisdom of the Bible, you know, never fails. So, just lean into it, especially at the age you're at. Because at the age you're at, it's probably the most, most, uh, most challenging because of a lot of different factors. Okay. Um, Chris, last slide, I think. Next uh, one. Uh, no, that's good. Actually, that's good. We started out with, a, with a, an admonition that was very, very similar to this, the very first verse we looked at. But I kind of want to leave you with this. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. This Columbia Jesus team that we've got going with, all these different high schools and middle schools, that's your probably number one job, is to keep loving each other. Because does anybody know what the Bible says that God is? Love. Love. Give yourself a round of applause. That's right. Woo! So when we practice love, when we practice love, what do we mean like? Like being God. Like, like God. We're imitating Him. And Jesus was really an expression of love by the way He came and died for us. Probably the, the greatest expression in all history. So... Keep that in mind as you go forward this, this school year, okay? And again, this Jesus team, I hope that you're leaning on each other this whole year. I'd like to hear it. I'm going to hear it. I'm going I'm to talk to Pastor Adam and just get, you know, check up on you guys and get some progress reports from you. I hope that this tonight is the start of a, a lot of great things for you in that area of, of team, teamness, uh, loving each other, relationship across school lines, so to speak. Okay, is there one more? I think so. Yeah, okay, so this is another one that I want to leave you with because all during my adolescence and my young adulthood, this is a verse that I look to. And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. The class I teach at MTSU is a wellness class. Wellness is heart, mind, body, and soul. It's more than just your physical health. So this has always been very insp inspirational to me. This is the great and first commandment. A second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Again, what's that called in society? The golden rule, right? They call it golden for a reason. Okay? So, I'm going to ask my wife to come up here. Let's give her a round of applause here, Joe. Woo! She's going to sing a song called Come As You Are. And uh, I might mention that she's a professional singer. She's got two, she signed two record uh, deals and um, has sung with our daughter uh, before. The Malones was, was their name. But this song is real catchy. And actually, actually, she's been practicing all week, so it's kind of in my mind. I can't find myself singing it. But it's called Come As You Are. And what it's talking about is that all the things we talked about tonight and we've worked on, all the, the different things the verses have, have pointed out. You don't have to be perfect to change your life. You don't have to have all these things down. No. You know, tonight, I think when she's done singing, I think there's going to be an, an opportunity to come if you want to and, and pray with, with, with uh, Pastor Adam up here. And that can be the start of something, you know, that you, won't, you can't even imagine the good things are going to happen. So, uh, come as you are, that's what she's talking about. Come as you are. You don't have to have everything perfect to give your life to Jesus. You just have to, just have, to have a willing heart. Willing heart. So, um, my better half, Jody Lynn Malone. Chad, here we go. you 
you are You don't take looks And I don't take breaks You don't take money Sure don't take fame All you really need Is a willing heart out to people and you come as you are to God because he takes us all no matter what we have in our life. All right, awesome. Awesome. Everybody, last time I'm going to ask you to do this or anybody's going to ask you to do this tonight. Maybe. Everybody stand up. Some of us are slower than others. You got a workout. Yeah, it was a good, good exercise. Man, it's awesome. I can't tell you guys how, um, how much Coach Mono impacted my life uh, at a time when I was in college uh, where I, I would say I was a Christian, but I wasn't living like I was. And I think it's because I hadn't truly had a real encounter with Jesus Christ and I hadn't made it a priority to be in a relationship with him. Because 
one thing I like to say, especially to our youth group, but just to everybody who, who's going to listen, it's not about religion. Jesus came and, and knocked out a lot of religion when he came. It's about a relationship with him, with your personal Lord and Savior. He's not impersonal. He's not somebody we come to church and we do things a certain way because that's the way it's always been done. He's a Savior who does things differently for everybody. He never healed anybody the same way twice. He was constantly doing things differently. So tonight, uh, you guys got to look at a man who uh, shined a light in a really dark part of my life. So can we give Coach Joe Malone and his wife one more big... Yeah.